today's video, we are gonna do a handstand walking tutorial. I know this has been highly requested and it's something Pat and I have been wanting to do for a while. So first, we're gonna start with just some stuff on the wall that you can practice on your own, stuff that we definitely wanna master before we start working our way off of the wall. Then from there, we'll give you some little tips and some tricks and some drills that you can start practicing on your own so you can master handstand walking outside of class, inside of class, whatever it is, and take your handstand walking game to the next level. So let's get started. One important thing before attempting handstand walking, you should have mastered and feel very comfortable upside down on your hands in a handstand hold. We go over the basics of handstand holds, how to get to a comfortable handstand hold in our handstand push-ups, which we can link below. So make sure if you're not comfortable or you really haven't practiced your handstand holds that we start there first before getting into the handstand walking. So I've got Pat here. You guys know Pat. Say hi to Pat. What's up, guys? <laughs> uh, we're going to go through some drills. So like I said, once we've mastered the handstands, we're comfortable upside down. The first drill we're going to practice is a handstand hold with a finesse style of a kick up. So what we don't want to do is kick onto our hands and let our feet smack the wall really hard like we're out of control. Because if that wall wasn't there, you would have just fallen onto your back. What we want to do is we want to think about actively pressing through our shoulder and trying to finesse our way up so we hardly make a sound. We're like a mouse when our feet hit the wall. So Pat's gonna demonstrate that for us. His hands will be about six to 12 inches from the wall. You barely even heard his feet hit the wall. From here, go ahead and do it again. He's gonna actively press through the ground and his eyes are looking right past his fingertips. He's in a straight line from his heels all the way to his fingers. Kick down. I'm gonna have him do it one more time and I want you guys to watch how lightly and how gently his heels touch the wall. You can see him controlling his body on the way up to the wall. That's very, very important for when that wall is not there. The next drill, once we've practiced the finesse and we're not smacking the wall with our heels, but we can find some control by squeezing our midline, squeezing our quads and pressing our hands through the floor, is gonna be the gate change. So that's gonna be a little bit of a weight shift. We're gonna start with just shifting our weight. So when Pat's gonna be upside down, he's gonna shift about 80 to 90% into his right hand and then 80 to 90% in his left hand. He's gonna leave both hands on the ground until he gets the hang of what that feels like. So what that's gonna look like, he's gonna kick up, nice finessed handstand. You can see here that he's shifting hands. Both hands are still staying on the ground, but he's getting comfortable applying more weight towards one hand. Go ahead and kick up why this is important. This is super important because in a handstand walk, at one point, one hand will come off of the ground. So we have to be comfortable actively pressing through one shoulder at a time. It's not gonna be a long time, but there is the point in time where you don't have both of your hands on the ground. So it's comfortable to get, it's important to get comfortable with that weight shift onto those hands. The next step from there is gonna be releasing your hands off of the ground. So now 100% of your weight will shift to the other hand instead of that 90-10 range. So what that looks like, he's gonna kick up to a wall, and then he's gonna actually release just about an inch or two off of the floor, one hand at a time. As you get more comfortable with this, you can try to touch your shoulder. So shoulder tap, keeping his hips over his shoulders and actively pressing through the ground. Go ahead and kick down. These are two awesome drills, and the whole point of these drills is to get you comfortable keeping your hips over your midline, or over your shoulders, and keeping your midline engaged. It's also gonna help you with that weight change, so when we get onto the floor and the wall isn't behind us, it's not quite so scary when we have to release one hand at a time. The next drill that we're gonna do is actually gonna be a handstand facing the wall. So I like this drill for a couple reasons. One, it's gonna prevent you from being able to put your butt against the wall and have a broken midline. It's gonna force you to stay in a nice hollow body position with only your toes hitting the wall because we don't wanna lay our chest and our belly against the wall. We wanna keep a hollow body position. From there, it's gonna force us patience. So when our, we're against the wall, we're gonna pull our feet slightly off the wall to have the patience to get our feet over our midline. And then once we feel like our feet are there, then we can begin taking the steps rather than just trying to kick up and run with our hands and then get our feet into position. So it's gonna teach us the patience. So I'm gonna have Pat kick up and show you. So he's just gonna walk himself up the wall like a wall walk. This is also gonna help us keep our head in line. Okay, so in this position, he's actively pressing through the floor. He has a nice hollow position. The only thing touching the wall are his toes. When he's ready, he's gonna squeeze his quads, his glutes, and his midline to find a handstand. 
and just get comfortable feeling what that weightless feeling feels like. From there, he was ready for it, so he took off once he felt like he was in that weightless position. Uh, but it's a really good way to practice knowing the walls right behind us because a lot of us miss the confidence to be able to kick up to get our feet over our hips, over our shoulders, and find that neutral, almost weightless feeling in a handstand. This drill is a great way to do that. All right, so moving off the wall, the next thing we're gonna do is just kind of build some confidence, actually kicking up and getting into a solid position where our hips are over our shoulders, our feet are over our hips. So what I'm gonna do is hold the hand out and let Christy actually kick up to my hand. The hand is really great. If you're not used to kicking up into space, it's gonna serve almost as our wall. This is also why we wanna practice a soft kick up. So I don't kick as hard as I can and take Pat's arm out with me. Ready? Nice. All right, so what we're doing right now is we're practicing being patient with our feet. Just like the drill that we did on the wall, we don't wanna lead with our hands. So I think a common mistake is that people kick up and they wanna start walking with their hands immediately and their feet trail behind. So what we wanna do is have the patience to wait for our feet to lead to where if I was actually gonna lean forward, I take that step when I have to to keep myself from falling. I don't take that step to initiate my walking. So Christy's gonna kick up again and she's gonna be patient waiting for her feet. And then once it becomes natural to take that step, that's when she's gonna be walking and I'm just gonna be here for as a support system. Good, 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 good. Kick back down. That's great. She kept moving with those. I think a really great way to practice these is kick up and take two steps and kick back down. And make those two steps feel very comfortable and easy and then add one or two steps at a time. Don't go just for distance. Don't think about accumulating um, as many walks as you can. Kick up and get those first two and make them feel easy every time before you progress for, further. All right, so Christy got a couple steps. There's a couple other things that we now wanna focus on. So if we were up, if I was just gonna walk and say I was gonna do an overhead lunge or carry something overhead, I would brace my entire body. And if I didn't, I would be totally shaking and unstable up top. So even though we're going upside down, that same principle applies. And that means we want a tight core, we want active shoulders, we wanna be squeezing our butt and even pointing our toes. So Christy's gonna do that and she's going to work with her shoulders, alternating her hips, just like we did on her wall, and she's gonna walk on her own this time. You got Failed this. <laughs> you got this. Patient with your feet. Patient, patient, good, 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 good. And you can notice she does not have a, a hard elbow bend. She's rocking on her shoulders. And come back down, good job. So what I mean by that is she's not stepping, bringing her elbow in. She's keeping her arms fairly locked out and doing the same rock that we did on the wall. So the hips are moving our weight side to side, keeping our center of gravity in one spot. And we are just lightly rocking to move one hand forward. We're not actually moving and taking a step. It's a small range of motion. And Christy was doing a great job showing that for us. So if you don't have a partner, the wall is another great way to practice this. But we're gonna start maybe four feet away. Christy's gonna kick up and take those two steps that we talked about and then just end at the wall. So she's also got a support system to kind of mentally build some confidence that she's not gonna fall over if we don't have a partner available. Nice, right to the wall. She can kick back down, take her steps back and practice that over and over. And the key to this really is practice and repetition and biting off small chunks at a time and then building upon those. See that one more time, Christy? Good, patient with the feet, right up to the wall, balances and kicks down, good job. All right, so another important key that probably gets missed more, than, more often than not is actually bailing. So if we come back down to our feet, that's a pretty natural way to bail. But when we fall over towards our back, it can be a little bit intimidating and there's a little bit more likely to have some sort of injury. So what we don't wanna do is actually do a back flop. And if we are finding ourselves maybe going a little bit too quick or our feet have gone too far, the, what we wanna do is actually tuck and roll, which we tuck our neck to our chin, we'll bring our arms down and actually just do a forward roll, which is a very easy and natural way to come out of this. I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like. So they're very low impact, very easy. Um, just think about chin to chest, rolling just like you would if you were two years old. And if you can't figure that out or if it doesn't naturally make sense to you, just think somersault. All we're doing is just rolling over. And it's a very easy way to protect our neck and come out gracefully. 
One thing that you may feel that I always feel in handstand walking is I think the first thing that tends to go on me is my triceps, just from the constant press out and your triceps being engaged. So one accessory exercise that I really like to do that I think definitely helps with handstand walking is gonna be tricep push down. So I just take my hands, I hook a band to something higher. Right now I have it up to the rig. Take my hands through and grab. Then I wanna make sure I lock my elbows in. We don't wanna use our whole arm because that's gonna be lat. We wanna lock our elbows in by our side. Then we're gonna drive our pinkies towards our pocket. And you wanna do, I always like to do four sets, nice and quick of max effort. When I say quick, I'm not pushing with my chest. I'm not using my arm, but I'm just locking everything in tight and then just literally extending the bottom half of my arm and coming back up right about 90 degrees and back down as many as you can until you hit failure then rest about two minutes four sets of that and that's really going to help your triceps build up some stamina some endurance and some strength for this handstand walking i hope you guys have enjoyed this video i hope it's helpful we would love to see your videos make sure to tag pat and i on instagram if you're starting to practice your handstand walk if you get your handstand walk or maybe if you just become more efficient at it or stronger with these tricep exercises if there's any other videos you guys want to see in the future definitely drop it below in the comments. We love these tutorials. We love sharing this information and we can't wait to bring more of them to you. Have a great day.